So today we're going to discuss purpose and the terror behind religion. Purpose and the terror behind religion. All right. Christianity and Islam are the world's bloodiest religions. I'm going to say it again in case y'all think I stuttered. Christianity and Islam are the world's bloodiest religions. But don't ever forget Judaism. When I speak on Judaism, I'm referring to them bastards that funded the slave trade. It was them bastards who insured our bodies. It was them bastards who paid for the ships to be built. Them bastards. I know you think I'm being cold and cruel. Give me that in Zechariah. You know what I want. Zechariah 9 and 6. Why are you saying, why are you calling people bastards? That ain't of God. Zechariah 9 and 6, for those of you whose ears are offended at the use of the word bastard. The book of Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Ashdod is the ancient name for modern day Tel Aviv. Write that down. Ashdod is the ancient name for modern-day Tel Aviv. Read it again. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. So God says a bastard shall dwell there. So don't get offended at me. And it's also these Judaizers who run and hide behind the media, manipulate the media, so that when you think of the atrocities that occurred to blacks and Latinos and Native American, you never include those bastards. You talk about everybody else. The white man is Christians, the Arab Muslims, but you never mention them bastards. Get mad. Southern Poverty Law Center having a field day. They mad as hell. Today I'm going to discuss the purpose of blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. A lot of us don't know what our purpose is. So today we're going to discuss, along with these bloody religions, we're going to discuss our purpose and how to identify it, okay? Give me Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Start there. Always good to start there. And we're going to start at verse 64. These are the identifying signs or markers that Moses had given to us to identify who the Israelites are today. Let me repeat that. The book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68, as well as Leviticus 26 and his other books, but those two primarily are the identifying markers or signs that identify who the Israelites are today. It's not done by DNA. That has got to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You got to check DNA. First, give me that about DNA, 1 Timothy 6. In order to identify who the father of the baby is, you need, to, you need to know, you have to have a clue of what. Let me see who's thinking. Here's a baby. Somebody is saying this baby belongs to such and such. What do you need to compare? What to what? Anybody know? In the back. Shalom. Shalom, brother Ariel. Um, you need to know who the father is. You have to know uh, exactly who he is to make that, co- that comparison. Right. And you need to com- you got to compare what? You have to compare his, his, gene, his gene pool in relationship to the child. Exactly. So when you hear somebody say, these bastards say they are descendants of Levi and King David, in order for them to say that, you, they would have to have what stored? They would need the DNA of King David or Levi, and they ain't got that. So stop believing that DNA bull crap. It's dumb as hell. Here you got, watch this. You got a girl, this true story, y'all know who I'm talking about. Girl walks in here, her mama black, her daddy Chinese. So she Chinese girl. She come in, I'm not talking about you. She come in, she talk about my daddy Chinese. So we said, well, you know what that means, right? Because she liked one of the brothers in here. 
We said, well, if your daddy is Chinese, you can't stay here. This ain't for you. So now she caught. She's stuck. She realized that she put her foot in her mouth. She runs out to get a DNA test. She runs back. Now, she looked half black. But the DNA test, when it tests your genes, guess what it also uh, uh, puts into the factor is your melanin, how much melanin is in your skin. So based on the melanin in her skin, it says that she is something like 72% black. So now you got to, you got to, uh, something's going on here. You're either going to go with that or God says you are what your, your father is. So now you got to decide. Now watch what God says about this stupid DNA thing. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science. Falsely so called. And opposition. The root of the word opposition is oppose. Opposition is opposes or opposing the word of God. So let's go back now to the identifying signs of Israel. Deuteronomy 28. Let's start at verse 64, please. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one of the, of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Two of the most famous wood and stone gods are Islam and Christianity. I'm going to say it again. Two of the most famous wood and stone gods is Christianity and Islam. Give me that precept in Jeremiah. Is it chapter 2 where it says to a stock you, my daddy? To a piece of wood that was brought me forth. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Find me that in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 27. Jeremiah, wait, 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 wait a minute. Jeremiah 2 and verse 27. Go ahead. Saying to a stock. A stock is a piece of wood. A stock is a piece of wood. Go ahead. Thou art my father. Thou art my father. You my daddy. Go ahead. And to a stone. And to a stone, like the Kaaba stone. Write that down. Kaaba stone, which means black stone. Go ahead. Thou art my father. And thou, to art my, thou art my father. Nope. And to a stone. Right. Thou hast brought me forth. Okay, thou hast brought me forth. Go ahead. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, arise and save us. Right. They're going to turn and say to these, to the stock and to the stone, arise and say. He's talking about our people. Go ahead. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. So according to the number of our cities is the amount of gods we worship. Just like today, According to the number of our cities, we ha and you can find a church on every block in a black and Latino community. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 2864, please. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Now, the first thing we were scattered amongst, amongst the Hamitic tribe. Let me say it again. The first people we were scattered amongst are the Hamitic tribes. Read again. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So we were scattered from Africa all the way to this side of the world in all the various nations, countries, and kingdoms. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods. And there, once you're amongst all these other nations, Hamites included, thou shalt serve other gods. And I'm stressing Hamites for a reason. It's going to play a pivotal part in today's class. Go ahead. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have something known. something wrong with his mic? Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Go ahead. Even wood and stone. Read. And among these nations And shall, among these nations that we were scattered amongst. Shalt thou find no ease. We would have no ease amongst these nations. Go ahead. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Go ahead. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. 
and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Now, one pivotal point. Now, we can pinpoint that in various points in history. For example, after the alleged Emancipation Proclamation, the white man established what? The Ku Klux Klan. Thank you. The Ku Klux Klan. They put in their, their hoods and they would terrorize us so that we had no ease. Okay? That's one point in history. But there are various other points that you can use when teaching. Go ahead. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. We have, would have none assurance of our life. Go ahead. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even. And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. So we wanted the days to hurry up and go by. That's how terrified we were. Go ahead. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear. And for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. So now, read verse 64 again. There's something I wanted out of that that I forgot to mention. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Historically, historically, why did we serve these other gods? gods. Why? When we were scattered amongst the nations, why did we serve these other gods? Let me see who's thinking. Raise your hand if you have a clue. Why did we serve these other gods? Only one hand. Let's see right here in the middle. Let me see what he's cooking with. Uh, Brother Bukaya. Brother what? Brother Bukaya. Bukaya. Yes, sir. Okay. So we were serving we would serve the, the other gods to blend in with the, um, the other nations. So you said we did it to blend in? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's see what else. Let's see what else. Give somebody else. Pick, pick somebody. Yeah, can y'all oil this chin for me, please, one Shalom. day? Shalom. Most like Christ's best, Bishop. Shalom. We were forced Who, who to are you? Brother Jotham. Brother Dotham, okay. Jotham. Oh, Jotham. J yeah, yeah. J-O-T-H-A-M. Yeah. Jotham. I got to remember y'all names. We were forced to. Right. We were forced to. We were forced to. If you didn't know, many times, like now we do it. Where's the brother at? Now we do it to assimilate. But in the beginning, we were forced. Christianity, we, we that, white, uh, let me word it this way. That's white supremacist form of Christianity. We didn't accept that. They forced that thing on us. They beat the hell out of us. When Christopher Columbus came, the so-called Indians didn't accept that. They was murdering them to celebrate and honor that stuff. Give me the proof of that in Revelation 13. Here's the proof. The book of Revelation chapter. Wait, wait, wait. Revelation 13. Verse. And 15. Verse 15. And he had power. To give life unto the image of the beast. So the image of the beast is the European Caucasian image of Jesus. The life they gave that image is the life of Christ. Write that down. The life they gave it was the life of Christ. But it truly was Caesar Borgias, the second son of Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. Read it again. And he had power. To give life unto the image of the beast. So the he is the white man. Had power because they were in rulership to give life unto the image of the beast. The life they gave it is the life of Jesus the Christ. Read. That the image of the beast should both speak. So it speaks in their media, their radios, their shows, their cartoons, their movies. That's how the image speaks. Because they find an artist to paint the likeness of Caesar Borgia. Or they look for an actor to play the role. Go ahead. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. That's the proof. They killed us if we didn't accept that. That's how we all became these modern day Christians today. It wasn't because we wanted to assimilate. We, d we do it now to assimilate. But back then they was killing us. Okay. From there, let's go to Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26, and let's start at verse 13, I think. 
Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 13. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. So the most I didn't want us to be a slave to the Hamitic nations of Egypt. Go ahead. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant. I give an example of a form of hating God's commandments. We don't have to celebrate the entire day to honor God. We can only do, we should only do half a day, 12 hours. That's all we got to do. That's a form of abhorring God's commandments. That's a form of abhorring God's commandments. We don't. But that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg. Ache. Ague. Ague. Thank you. That shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Go ahead. And I will set my face against you. This is the part I wanted. Verse 17 is what I really wanted. Read that part again. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies, that they hate you. Nope. They no. that hate you shall reign over you. The Bible prophesies they that hate you shall reign over you. Go ahead. They that hate you shall reign over you. And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. A lot of us like to think that because we have white associates or, or, or good white friends, the Bible says, no, they that hate you shall reign over you. The Bible says your enemies shall reign over you. It is what it says. It is what it, you can't change it. You can't alter it. Stay in the same chapter. Jump down to verse 36. Verse 36. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts and to the lands of their enemies. Watch this. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee. Now we know why some of you brothers are scared of cats. We know why, because this spirit is still on you. You got to shake yourself from that. But this truth is meant to wake you up, to shake that spirit of fear from off you. Read it again. And the sound of a shaken leaf. Right, Jan? Oh, man. Shall chase them. And, and the they sound, here, a leaf is falling. Master coming. Run! Run! Brother, it's a leaf. What is what's wrong with you? It's a leaf. It's only a leaf. Calm down. Go ahead. As fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. That's bad. Can you imagine that thing? Running with a leaf falling from a tree? You think Master coming? And we would run. Wow. Go ahead. And they shall fall one upon another as it were before a sword when none pursueth. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. So if you don't think the Bible is real, this is telling you. When it says you will have no power to stand before your enemies, ask us. Do the math. You got a plantation with 200 slaves and a, a house of five Edomites. Do the math. 200 slaves. And I'm not talking no puny, weeny, or undernourished slaves. I'm talking about big bucks. Six foot, five, 300 pounds of all muscle. Terrified of the snaggletooth white man. Where you could crush his head with one hand. But we were terrified of this guy, even his woman. If she pointed, we were scared to death. That this, read the hope, verse 37 again. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursueth, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. How many of y'all saw Django? There's a scene. I'm going to watch this. There's a scene where you got the, the Edomites sitting at the table, they betting with the two slaves who are wrestling for I told you. The slave, one slave takes his thumb and rips the eyes out of the other slave. Then breaks his neck. That slave was three times the size of the two Edomites at the table. How easy would it have been to just reach out and just snap their necks? 
<laughs> they was terrified. Oh. They was terrified of the 400 pound slave they was fighting. But that 95 pound snaggle tooth cutter, we was terrified of. It. I'm sitting there watching this going, surely there is a God. Surely there is a God. because, And we say now, that wouldn't happen if I was there. Oh, yes, it would. <laughs> oh, yes, Massa. <laughs> When the Lord take that spirit off you, it's gone. That lion like spirit, gone, is gone. Wow. What verse we at? That was verse 37. Go ahead. And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' land. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity, in their sins, in your enemies' land. Go ahead. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. I want somebody to explain that. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. Who can explain that part? That's all I want. No hands are up. Okay, give the mic to somebody. I don't care. Pick somebody. I can't hear you. Soldier Zion. Soldier Zion. Yes, sir. Um, the pining, pining away in the um the sins of our four and our forefathers, basically the same sins our forefathers was committing, we would still be committing that over here. Exactly. I'll give you a, a good example today. Some of y'all daddies, y'all know, especially y'all from Jamaica, your daddy was a coxman. Y'all know what that term mean. You have a whole bunch of women with a whole bunch of babies, and you don't take care of not one. You think that's glorious. So because your daddy used to do it and your daddy's daddy used to do it, you want to be a coxman too. I deal with 10 women. Wow, brother, you are a true coxman. You're pining away in the sins. Read that part again, that bottom part. And also, and also in, in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. So we kept on, like that expression, like father, like son. Same thing. We kept the sins going. Read on. And if... They shall confess their iniquity. Now, here's the stipulation. To get out of the problem, to get to shake that spirit of fear, to shake that spirit of pining away in iniquity, the Most High gives us the solution right here in verse 40. Go ahead. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers. So, not only uh, confess your iniquity, it says the iniquity of your fathers. Go ahead. With their trespass, which they trespassed against me. And that also they have walked contrary, un contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled. Now this is what the Apostle Paul often spoke about when he, said, when he would say such things like in Romans, circumcision is of the heart. This is what he's making reference to about the Israelites. He ain't talking about Edomites or Philistines. He's talking about the Israelites. An uncircumcised heart is a heart filled with sin. That's what he's talking about. Read that part again. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishments of their iniquity. Stop right there. That's a heavy point right there, Moses is saying. And they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. You must come. We. Let me say we. We must come to the point in this truth where God is right. Give me that in Acts 5. You know what I want, right? It's either 30 or 29. 29, thank you. This is what Peter said, the apostle Peter said. Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather. Give me the one in Romans 3. I think that's the one I want. Romans 3, let God be true. That one right there. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Yeah, this is a better precept. Go ahead. God forbid, yea, let God be true. Let God be true. But every man a liar. But every man a liar. Meaning your thoughts, your will, that's a lie. So now here we are in captivity. We look at the slave movies. We look at all the atrocities. We must come to the point and say, let God be true. God is justified in all that he did to our people. Go back to Leviticus 26 again. And the bottom of verse uh, 41. And they. If then 
their and un- they. Oh, excuse me. And they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Why? Because we were warned by Moses that if we break God's commandments, these are the things that will happen to us. So let God be true. The Most High's name be praised. We got to come to that point. Verse 42 now. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. Notice the stipulation. He says, when you admit I'm right, then, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. Read. And also my covenant with Isaac. Uh Uh-huh. And also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. And I will remember the land. You see that? Go ahead. The land also. Now I want y'all to. I want. I just want to say this for a second, because I heard a brother, brother say, "You know, there's a lot of Israelites waking up." Yeah, there's a lot of Israelites waking up, but they only know that they're Israel. I'm gonna say what I, I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. They know they're Israel, but they will not keep the commandments. Check out all the black yayas out there. You know who they are. They got the kufis on and everything is yah be praised, yah yah. They you say yah, they gotta bang the drums every five minutes. The hell is this? They're dealing, still dealing whole among multiple women, girlfriends everywhere, babies everywhere, hatred all on YouTube. So the Bible says, read 41 and 42 together. And that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. Here comes. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. What does that mean? Keep the commandments. So although you see multitudes of Israelites waking up, they're only waking up at this point to the truth that they're Israel. That's not what this is talking about. That is not what this is talking about. Read on. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. You also got a group of idiots that say, just don't take the chip and you'll be saved. You could be a homosexual, a child prognosticator, a pedophile. You could be anything. Just don't take that chip. If you take the chip, the microchip, you can't be safe. That is the stupidest doctrine I've ever heard. And you have people, con, 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 adawan, con. That's dumb. Now, if the chip made you an adulterer, a liar, or homosexual, okay, I understand that then. Don't take that chip. No. What does the chip do? You can pay for, you can pay for snicker bars. Oh, that's, that's what God is against, buying a snicker bar. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. It can, uh, I, it can find you wherever you're at in the earth, like on your cell phone. You know, you got the little chip in your phone. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Stupid. Just don't take that chip, you homos. Then you'll be saved. You, that's stupid as hell. Doesn't make sense to me. Read on. Now, let me, let me clarify. I'm not saying go out and take a chip. In fact, I wouldn't suggest you put anything in your body. But the thing that God was always against, was it a chip or sin? Sin. So let's not be stupid, all right? Come on. We don't. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. Here's another one. If you don't say Yahweh 50 times, you can't be saved. See? That's why you're all wicked, because you don't say it 50. I got to say it 50 times to be saved? Yeah. That is the stupidest doctrine. Y'all don't see nothing wrong with that? Do y'all see anything wrong with that? Yes, sir. Wow, yes, I'm, like, sir. I'm talking to myself up in here. Uh, con. Uh, 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 yeah. Maybe they say every night I say it 50 times. Uh, 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 Just uh, uh, to be sure. How can I be sure? Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, Bishop is the mentality of a child, mentality of a kid. Hey, yes, in this old school, can I tell you, in Deacon Yawasap, we used to do something called the four corner prayer. And you had to say the Hebrew. You had to pray. Which way is east? I forgot. Okay, east. You gotta, and you got to go clockwise. You start here. Blah, 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 blah. Say the same prayer this way. Ba 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 ba. Then you turn this way. Ba 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 ba. Why do you gotta say it four times? Because God won't hear you if you don't say it four times. You gotta say it four times in Hebrew for God to hear you. Y'all don't see nothing wrong with that. Now back then I was a kid. I was like yeah yeah, and I would curse you out if you didn't accept what we did. But upon when you gain some type of maturity, some type of intellect, upon reading the scripture, you go, well, where did our fathers do that? We didn't do that. That's something somebody made up and we went along with it. Now, now we did that. I, I love my elders. I don't want to speak evil against them because they did what they thought was right. What verse we at? Verse 42. Go ahead. 
the land also shall be left That's of verse them. Verse 43. Verse 43 now. Yes, sir. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths. So does that mean just 12 hours? They shall enjoy, the land shall enjoy 12 hours a week. And shall, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. Mm. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. There, he says it again. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Accept that thing. We got to accept it. We, here we are. We got to accept it. We are here because of our sin. God is right and we are wrong. Go ahead. Because, even because they despise my judgments. Because you, we despise God's judgments. And because their soul abhorred my statutes. When will the Sabbath be gone? I can't stand the Sabbath day. I'm going to make up a doctrine. Twelve hours. Only twelve. Woo! So the other twelve, what we can do? We can buy, we can sell, we can do whatever we want. I like that. You know, a sister wrote us and said it sounds right because she said the Sabbath is burdensome to her. I went, delete. I didn't even respond to her. And I know she wasn't married. I knew she was single. So you stupid, my shoes, stupid, delete. She just hears something one time. It just sounds right because keeping the Sabbath is a burden. Wow, wow. I bet you Christmas was never a burden. Thanksgiving was never a burden. You spend your whole check go broke and then poor house. That was never a burden. Go ahead, Captain Zeph. What you got? Somebody posted on the comment board that the, sun, the Sunday Sabbath is more convenient. <laughs> hey, keep hope alive. White man's white supremacy is on. Hey, that's, that's why early on, Bishop, you said, you said a lot of people is waking up. And knowing that they Israel, but the key thing is that they not keeping the commandments. Right. You understand? And that's what we're going to push in IUIC. We're going to push keeping the commandments. That's right. You understand? Because I'm telling you, people find reason to break, break the most high God commandments. You shouldn't be finding reason to break God commandments. Because why? The reason we went into slavery was why? Because we was breaking God's commandments. It was grievous. We didn't want to keep the Sabbath. We didn't want to keep the high holy days. You know, we was, we, was, we was carrying grudges. We had hatred to each other and all of that. So we shouldn't be finding ways to, to break God's laws. If there's anything, we should be finding more commandments to right. keep. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you all understand what I'm saying? You know, because as I said, I saw, I saw some stupid comment. This one person, they said, um, you know, I like how the, the, the Sabbath now is, is, is um, the Sabbath starts in the morning, daylight, when the sun rises. Because in the afternoon, when they finish work on Friday, they could come home, cook, do their laundry. You know, you know, people want to use God's laws, want it to be convenient for them. You understand? But those of y'all that think like that, y'all going to die, man. Mm -hmm. For real. <laughs> Straight like that. Exactly. What verse we in? That was verse 43. 44 now. And yet, for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor, him, abhor them to destroy them utterly. So God says, although I'm punishing you, Israelites, I'm not going to totally destroy all of you. I'm not going to hate all of you. Go ahead. And to break my covenant with them. And I'm not going to break the covenant I made with you from the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm not going to do that. Go ahead. For I am the Lord their God. But I, will, but I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors. So ancestry is very important. Being an Israelite is very important. Knowing who your fathers are is important. If Now, most of us don't know. We can only go back so many, maybe two generations, maybe th some three, four if you're blessed. But that's, that's why this whole thing is based on faith. We fit the curses in the Bible. We are the people of the book. We are the, they, those are our ancestors. Do you understand that? I'm trying to prove my, you can't prove your ancestry. The white man did an excellent job at destroying records. How many of you saw the movie Mandingo? Okay, there's a scene in the movie where Ken Norton plays Mandingo, and they bring a woman to him, and they say, hey, you can't breed him with her. He says, why not? He said, that's his sister. He said, he don't know that. That's what they was doing with us, interbreeding us. Okay. 
Just food for thought. Read that again. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. Read. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. From there, let's go to Matthew, the 20th chapter. I just need y'all to stay, hang tight. I'm going somewhere with this. Matthew, the 20th chapter. And are, are the haters still online? Okay, I, ho I hope all you haters are still online. You know, people think because they hate, they're going to stop God's truth. Wow, how, how wrong they are, how unlearned they are. Now they will see the true man of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.